Church on the Rise would like to welcome you to the Ministry of the Word. We pray that it will help you find the Word of God more clearly in your life. Now this year, God doesn't want you to drift with just any wind that comes. He wants you to actually dream and set your sails for a course, for a destination, to live out the purposes of God for your life and what he has for us as a church. And so these messages are designed to help us focus and see what God has for us. And you know, as I said last Sunday, we're just not here to breathe the air. We're here for a reason, for a purpose. And once that purpose is fulfilled, God can take us home. Ultimately, the Bible says, when this gospel is preached in the whole world, then the end will come. And so it, it is one of those verses that, that help us give big picture focus to why we're here. We're really here to see God's love, the gospel of Jesus Christ, shared with the whole world. And do you know, the quicker we do that, the quicker we can all go home. But God has a day, God has a design, God has a, a moment in time where he says that that will be the day where Christ returns. And I guess God's got to work that out. He has worked it out to say, well, I want this many people on the planet and uh, this many people are, are going to come home. But our role is to join him in presenting Jesus to the world. Isn't it a great privilege to share Jesus? And, uh, you know, if you don't feel some f uh, worth about your own life, recognize that you're a carrier of the greatest news that the world could ever hear. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And I've often said, you know, if you share the gospel, you'll travel the world. Preach the gospel, share the gospel. And you'll go all over the world because that's where God will send you. And uh, you probably noticed on the slides here this morning that there is a team going to Thailand in a, in a week or so's time. Next Sunday, we'll get the team out and pray for them. But if you could just keep them in your, in your thoughts and prayers. John and Jean are going around Australia as well, so keep them in, in your heart and prayers. And, you know, together this year we can see the purposes of God accomplished and we do that together. And so last week we, we saw see the dream. Seeing the dream is all about hope. Everything starts with hope. Life doesn't exist really without hope. And so the hope is that we, we focus on something that God has for us. And we, we began the story of Gideon. All Gideon could see, next slide, is Past disappointments, they were being ripped off. His perception of God was, God, you have abandoned us. Because of everything that was going wrong, it wasn't working for them. And the enemy was, was over their lives. He felt, God, he actually accused God of saying, God, you have abandoned us. But God hadn't abandoned them. In fact, they had abandoned God initially. And so as they turned to God, God began to work in Gideon's life and also his present circumstances. He was, they were the smallest clan and he was the youngest of the clan. So God began to turn his thoughts around by speaking to him. And we saw last week that God spoke to him three times and said, come on, Gideon, I'm with you. You're the man. And finally, hope began to be birthed in his, in his soul, in his mind, and uh, he said, well, God, if I've found favor, if I've got your favor, then just, just stay here. Because the, the angel of the Lord was there. And he said, just stay here while I bring a sacrifice. And so hope was beginning to rise in his heart at that point. And uh, he wasn't fully convinced that it was God, that this was going to be, that the deliverance was coming, that... He could see his hopes accomplished, but hope was there. He was expectant. And so today we go on message to, to speak the dream. We go from hope to faith. 
Hebrews 11.1 1 is a very powerful verse on faith. And it says, faith is the confidence that we hope or what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. So, you know, it's one thing to hope. It's another thing to have faith. A woman, a long time before anyone sees the bump, she knows she's pregnant because there's change in her world, in her body, and she knows that she's carrying a child. And that's like faith. Faith is a substance. Faith is a conviction. Faith is something that is birthed in your spirit and life and you know that it's going to happen before it does happen. And it's an assurance. It's a conviction. It's, it's, it's something that is like, well, I am pregnant and I know it. You can't see it and it, it's not birthed yet. But I know it is true, and that is what faith is. And you know what? Today, I pray, my prayer is that all of us will be pregnant this year with something. I am pregnant today. I am pregnant with more souls this year than we got last year. I am pregnant with 200 people attending our morning service on a Sunday morning. We got to 150 last year. I am pregnant with a youth pastor. I am pregnant with a kids pastor. I am pregnant with more money for missions. I am pregnant that all of you will find your destiny in God and live out the purposes of God. They're the things that I am pregnant with. What are you pregnant with? What's in your spirit? Well, pastor, I've got some hopes this year. Well, you know what? That's where it all starts. But we want to get you pregnant today. Please don't leave right now. <laughs> you can see how sometimes they take things out of context, you know. Well, the pastor wants everybody to be pregnant. I want you to make a chicken out of this egg. The egg speaks of hope. When you've got an egg, and uh, you know, I brought this up last week, the egg speaks of hope. And for this egg, though, to birth a little chicken, it has to have an incubation period, it has to have a time where the hen actually lays her chest, her heart, on this thing, and speaks over it and keeps it warm and this little chicken inside this egg begins to grow. Isn't it amazing how that an egg can become a chicken? Your hopes, your dreams can come true. I love, you know, what they say at Australia Zoo. Dreams come true at Australia Zoo. Well, I want to tell you that our dreams come true with God. Your hopes come true with God. Delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And so those desires are quickened, you know, by God in your heart and spirit. You know, this egg here is never begun to come a chicken unless it's fertilized egg. There's a lot of hens out there right now sitting on eggs that will never become chickens. And that egg will actually go rotten. You know, some our hopes need to be quickened by the Holy Spirit. And hope needs to have that God stamp on it. It needs to be fertilized by the Holy Spirit. You do, you'll be glad one day that you didn't get everything you hoped for. When you see Jesus 
And when you do life, and when you get through the different chapters of life, you'll look back and you'll say, well, I, I understand it now. But when you're going through it, you're cranky at God and everybody else because you didn't get what you wanted. Hello? Has any, has anybody else experienced that? I'm still cranky at God about some things. Not cranky, but I would have done it different. Would you have done it different? I would have. You know, as a dad, I would have loved to have two kids. And so I used to hope, and I'd hope, and I'd hope, and I'd hope. But that little egg never got beyond hope. And I thank God that, you know, his ways are right. See, I never got to the point where I came from hope to faith with our kids. Because, you know, faith always comes off. Once you've got faith, faith, once you've got faith, once you've got a deposit of faith, you got it. You may not have driven the car yet, but the keys are yours. That, that thing is yours. Faith is so real. Faith is so strong. Faith is so real, it's realer than your present circumstances. And so once you've got faith, faith is the substance of things hopeful. You'll see it if you've got faith. But today is about trying to take hopes into faith. But not everything that you hope for will always come to reality. But those things that are uh, fertilised, those things that, that, that are God things. And so here's Gideon and he's to the point where he's saying, you know what, this could be real. This could be our moment in time where we get deliverance and God you know, gets these Midianites off our backs, gets the enemy off my back. There's a change. This could be, hang on, God, just stay here because I, I gotta, I'm going to lay on this egg here and, and I'm going to just follow through with this thought that I've got that you've given me, this hope that you've given me. And so, we start off then, we, let's get into the scripture here, because in Judges chapter 6 and verse 19 sort of starts it off, Gideon goes and gets a young goat, and then 20, I think I've got the same version of you, but if I haven't, um, it'll be close. In verse 20 it says, The angel of God said to him, Place the meat and the unleavened bread on this rock, and pour the broth over it. And Gideon did as he was told. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and bread with the tip of the staff in his hand, and fire flamed up from the rock and consumed all he had bought. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he cried out, O oh God! Everybody say it! He was saying, this is God. Oh, sovereign Lord. Oh, God. I've lost my point on the page. And then he said, I'm doomed because anybody who saw God would die. That was how it was back in the Old Testament under the law. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Verse 23. It's all right, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid. You will not die. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. The altar remains in Ophrah in the land of the clan of Ebenezer to this day. You'll see in verse 23 there that he spoke. He, he named it Yahweh, which means uh, Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. So Gideon here goes from hope to faith in saying, you know what? This is God. God is going to do something here and God has clearly spoken to me. It was a God assignment. He knew that he was the man called to deliver Israel. And so to go from hope to faith, is a God encounter. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of God or, or, or the gospel. And so 
with us today as, as you have your hopes, as you, as you have your thoughts, as we connect to God, those hopes can change into real faith. Can I challenge you today and say, you know what? I just believe too many of us live in the hope realm and not in the faith realm because we don't fully understand it. And today's message is about understanding how to take your hopes into faith. One husband said to his wife one day, why do you call it shopping, darling? You never buy anything. She looked at him and she said, why do you call it fishing? You never catch anything. <laughs> I thought if he, if he was smart enough, he'd just keep quiet if she never bought anything. But Sometimes all we do is window shop with the promises of God. Sometimes in life, it's always, well, they've got it, but I can't get it. It's always we have our hope, but that hope needs to turn to faith. Faith is such a wonderful, wonderful thing because, you know, in the book of Hebrews, there's a whole chapter in chapter 11 is given to the heroes of faith. And the Bible actually says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. To be born again, you have to have faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. So our world started with faith with God. But God wants us to continue on and, and do things by faith because faith is the excitement realm of God. Faith, when you come into faith, you begin to get an adventure with God. When you get into faith, you begin to get into the supernatural of God. That's where the miracles are, is where you get into faith. And so let me just give you some examples today of how people walked in faith. Because my heart, is to help us as a people get into faith. Faith is not just a positive confession. You know, people outside of Christ talk about positive confession. And you know what? Positive confession works because it's so close to the realm of faith. But faith is more than just positive confession. Oh, well, I'm going to be like a galah and just keep, keep confessing it. I will have a new house. I will have a new house. Well, I want to tell you that you're going to get sore in the throat because if it's not God, it won't happen. So it's not just speaking things like a galah. It's actually speaking what God has said to you and what is connected in your spirit. Hello, we all got that? So it's the egg that's fertilized. It's alive, honey. That thing's alive, that egg. I can, I, I'm sure I can hear that chicken inside that egg. It's changing. And so faith begins to be so real in our lives. It's more than positive confession. It's not a formula. It's not something that you manufacture. It's something of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 39.3 says, My heart was hot within me, and while I was musing, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. That's a powerful verse. It's all about the realm of faith. It's like the chicken sitting on that egg while I was musing, while I was over my faith or my hope. Faith started to rise. And as faith rose, I spoke. Pastor Cho in South Korea, in Seoul, Korea, many, many years ago, his church was just growing at a phenomenal rate and he had, I think he had about 100,000 people coming at the time. And he had to build a new auditorium that held 10,000 people. And so he started to build this big new building and he got into financial difficulty as he was trying to build it and so what he said is he said he would go he felt God tell him to build this building so he would go into his prayer closet and he would pray 
And his faith would rise in his prayer closet. Thank you, God, that you've got this under control. You're going to give me the finances. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I just so feel so full of faith. Thank you, God. Then he'd go out the door and he would begin to see all the problems. He'd go on the work site and we, we haven't got enough of this and we haven't got enough of that. And he says, oh, my faith would start to go down and down and down and down. And I would begin to fear. So I would run back into my prayer closet and I would pray again. And so it, as, he, as he worked on his faith, as he prayed through his faith, finally he was able to build that building. Faith is the tough part of the journey. You know, hope comes fairly easy. Who finds hope? I can hope. You know, I think most of us are quite positive. We get our hopes. But to take from hope to faith and begin to speak it is that challenging part. And so God wants to help us through that part. But it's it's connection to God and prayer that will do it. Hope and faith work like this. When I first met Rhonda, I was hoping that she would marry me because I wanted to marry her. She wasn't even interested in me at the time. God had to open her spiritual eyes. <laughs> and so I, I, I hoped, and I hoped that she was the right one for me. And I I really, that was something that was important to me at the time. I was going to be a preacher. I knew I was going to be a preacher. And I thought, God, I've got to get the right wife. And I said to God, God, I want you to show me that she's the right one. And so I began to pray about it, you know. And I'd run down to all the altar calls and ask the preachers to pray for me. And please prophesy over me that she's the one. And I was fasting and praying. This went on for months and she's... Saying, well, are you going to marry me or not? You know, and well, I've just got to hear from heaven. And, and uh, you know, I was hoping that she would be the right one. Finally, I made the decision, okay, I'm going to do this, God, anyway. So, you know, I'm standing there on, on our wedding day in my suit. I could take you to the spot. And the Holy Spirit said to me, she is the one. My hope went to faith. And so when the preacher asked me, do you want to marry this woman? I said, I do, I do, I do. I said it actually three times. I do, I do, I do. And you know what? I said it with such conviction and confidence that it was, it's an incredible thing what happens when you get faith. It just changes all your world from just hoping for things to a confidence to say, you know what, that's mine. You know, with your salvation, isn't it great to be able to say, you know what, I am born again and I'm heaven bound. When you're believing for something, to be able to get up in the morning and say, that is mine by faith, that's mine this year. And so my challenge to you today is, what is yours? Abraham was called Abram. And so he had to change his language. God said, I'm cha- I want you to change your name to Abraham. From Abram to Abraham. And so for many years, he was calling himself Abraham long before he had a child. And so when you've got faith, you can speak those things that God has. And you need to speak those things. God said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, go down into that valley. What do you see? He said, I see a valley full of dry bones. And God said, I want you to prophesy to the dry bones. And so he said, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And next minute, all these bones began to rattle must have been an exciting, you know, all these skeletons all started to come together. The next minute they stood up and uh, all the bones came together. Hear the word of the Lord. And so, you know, finally he, sp- he, he speaks the wind of God, the breath of God into these skeletons and they became a great army, the Bible says. Why? Because he had faith to speak 
what God was saying. And you know, there's some dead things in our world that we need to begin to speak to this year in Jesus' name. There's some stuff that we've carried too long. There's some weaknesses we've carried too long. There's some dreams we've carried too long. There's some hopes we've carried too long that we need to be by faith this year saying, you know what, this year is my year. This year I'm going to see that happen. And so you begin to speak to it in Jesus' name because that's how faith works. When God wanted to take chaos into creation, he, he hovered over the chaos, the Bible says. The Spirit of God hovered over the chaos. That's hope. And then God spoke, let there be light. Let there be. And so in our lives, there needs to be, first of all, that thing birthed by the Spirit in hope. And then we speak to it in Jesus' name. You know, you can speak to your health. You can speak to your wealth. You can speak to any aspect of your life because God is interested in every aspect of your life. Hello. God is interested in all of our part, the parts of our lives because they all impact our world, our families and the kingdom of God. And so as as we see faith working, Jesus, let me just take you to this last uh, scripture this morning. Jesus explains faith in Mark 11:22 to 24. And I want you to uh, just, just get this into your heart because he wants us to understand what faith is. In Mark 11 it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Or the real translation is, Have God's faith. For verily I say unto you, That who, whosoever shall say, Everybody say, That's speaking. Unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. It's, it's just a wonderful verse about how we go from hope to faith. Desire is hope. Then he says, the things that you desire, pray. And so we go from hope to faith in that communion with God, in that connection with God. I said last week, I really am going to be challenging our church this year to have devotions, daily devotions. Get into the word of God. You know, I just encourage everyone to read at least one chapter of the Bible a day. Have a, have a little notebook beside you, read one chapter and write at least one thought down. And also, I'm encouraging people to get online and get Rick Warren's devotional. It's just a great devotional and, and it's just someone inputting into our lives. I was interested to read this week that he has 800,000 people getting his daily devotion. You know, that's almost a million people. The guy's got something to give. And so just get online, Rick Warren and uh, Daily Hope, it's actually called. And so as we commune with God, then our faith will rise. And whatsoever we say will come to pass. And so desire is hope. Believe that you receive them is faith. You know, let me finish off with a story this morning. And, uh, you know, f for me, there's things I've hoped for, as I've already said, haven't come to pass. But I have to accept, well, that wasn't you, God. But there are other things that in our journey they have. Just put up the uh, picture of our tent back there. And I know I think I showed this when we were in Brisbane we had that little hall that's uh, on the your right, is it? Yeah, on the right-hand side. And we were meeting in there and we had about 150, 200 people stacked into this little hall and we got this marquee tent that was there. And we were running about 250 on a Sunday morning and one of my guys in the church, he came up to me and he said, you know what? Pastor Rod, if we could only get some trusses, he said, we could build 
a new church. And you know, when he said it to me, hope for a new building went to faith. I just, I just knew that it was, that was the seed being fertile. We knew we needed a new building, but that was the fertilization. That was just the moment. You know, when somebody just says something to you and it goes off in your spirit, and you know, that, there's something on that. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Don't miss that little point because that's how God works. And it's either when you're reading the Word, when you're here in church, when, when you're driving your car, anywhere, God can just speak and just fertilize that hope. And so within me, I thought, you know what? He's right. If we can just get some trusses, we'll build a new auditorium. And that, that faith just kept on, on being there. It took about two years before we actually got some trusses. And so just uh, the next picture uh, there. This, this guy here picked up some trusses. And funny enough, they were from our, our home uh, in Tamworth, our home church down there in Tamworth. But do you know when this truck turned up? I was like a woman who just had given birth in the sense... It's about time. That's faith. That's faith. Because I'd been expecting it to happen. It wasn't a surprise. When you've got faith, you know it's going to happen. You're believing it's going to happen. And so they turned up. And you know, the rest is just amazing how God works. One of the guys in the church bought a sandblaster at the time. So we sandblasted them all. There's me. Skinny legged me in the with a hat on there, and uh, the pink pants. <laughs> was I wearing pink pants? I think I was wearing pink pants. <laughs> Les, just erase that from your mind. <laughs> Next picture. So we built we built this church, and not only with the trusses, you know, the whole church was just a walk of faith. Because you know, I'm a pastor that says I don't want to get churches into major debt. So we're going to build this thing debt free. And so we, we started on the journey brick by brick. And uh, so that's what happened. And then uh, we built it and then we filled it. In Jesus name. Turn next picture. Well, I thought we did. Yeah. Held, held 800 people. We never had 800 there on a Sunday. But you know, God wants you and I to go on a wonderful adventure in life. Where, where will your life go and be? Life can be a wonderful, fulfilling adventure because Jesus said, you know what? I've come to give life and give it to the fullest. I've come to give you the best life. But the best life is only entered into by faith. And you've got to understand how it works. And I've been trying to help you today do that. But you know what? It, it does come back to knowing God because you've got to hear God. <laughs> you can't do this. You can't have this happen without a connection to God. Because faith comes by hearing. Faith comes out of connection with God. You'll hear God when you keep free from sin. You'll hear God more. When you come to church every Sunday. You'll hear God when you have daily devotions. You'll hear God when you fellowship with other Christians. You'll hear God more and more when you're looking for Him. God wants to say some wonderful things to us this year so we can live the faith life. Come on, let's get in the faith lane. Let's see some miracles. Let's see some wonderful things happen this year. I'm pregnant. What are you pregnant with? What are you pregnant with? Come on, let's stand this morning, shall we? The worship team would come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when Jesus left planet Earth, he was really saying, you know what, it's your turn now. I've done what I needed to do on planet Earth. It's your turn. 
Come on, let's get on board with this thing. Let's let's do what God's called us to do. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just open your heart, open your spirit to God. Maybe you're standing here today and you're saying, you know what, Pastor, I'm not sure what I should be doing this year. Well, let's start today. Let's get, let's get on the journey. Let's not drift. Let's dream. Because if you start drifting, you'll, you'll end up in places you never wanted to be. Set your sails to the wind of the Holy Spirit. We trust you've enjoyed the ministry of the Word. And if you'd like more details or how to contact our church and its resources, look at our website, www.churchontherise.org.au.